warm, warm welcome to everybody for uh, Sunday worship here at uh, virtually um, wherever we are for Holy Sepulchre. It's fabulous as always to gather. Um, for those who don't know, I think some of you will have met Tom, uh, who's uh, there with the guitar. Uh, but alongside him is uh, another good friend of both of ours, uh, Pete Glenister, uh, another singer-songwriter who uh, they've collaborated on a number of things together over the years. And so it's wonderful to have you both joining us and uh, oh. leading us in worship today. So thank you. And just welcome to everybody on uh, Trinity Sunday, which um, for those particularly coming from the Church of England will, will and, and the churches will know this is one of those special Sundays where normally you get a curate to uh, to do the talk because it's meant to be the scariest preaching Sunday of the year for some strange reason, but uh, we'll explore a little bit of that later. So let us just gather for a moment, uh, allow God to meet us where we are and uh, let's open in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for bringing each of us together. Enable us to gather in your name this day to come closer together that whilst we are not physically gathering in our church, we are gathering though in your church, that we are still one body, that your spirit will meet us, your spirit will fill us where we are. And I pray that we will know you better this day, Lord, that we will each receive what it is we need that we are asking for and our prayers will be heard by you. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. And I'll pass over to Pete and Tom. Thank you.
come to you Let my heart be changed Renewed Flowing from the grace That I found In you Lord I come to know The weaknesses I see In me Will be stripped away By the power of your love Hold me close Let your love surround me Bring me near Draw me to your side of like the eagle and I will soar with you your spirit leads me on in the power of your love Lord unveil my eyes and let me see you face to face the knowledge of your love as you live in me. Lord, renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life in every living By the power of your love And hold me close Let your love surround me And bring me near Draw me to your side So with you, your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Straight to where my God's feet. Okay, straight to where my God, I think. Great. Well, welcome everyone. Um, we're gonna skip a song. We've been told to hurry up, so we're gonna skip the next one and, and go straight to um one that we wrote many years ago. Uh, and it, it sort of talks about being from a place of, um, well, you'll see, but from a place of lowliness and sort of desperation um, and seeking God. And I think that's where a lot of us are. Um, I'd certainly speak for myself. Um, sometimes it's hard to, to reach God as we know him. Um, sometimes it's hard that, that we don't feel in the right place to um, and I just pray that, that this will help any of you bring you closer Oh, 
How I long to find the words to say So I sing to reach you Sing to be with you Oh my God, hear me pray that each of us who are in that place that you reach out to us that you share with us your pool of grace that we can be ready and open and willing sometimes i think that's the hardest part is to get ourselves ready for you god we think we know it all we think we have it all <laughs> how foolish <laughs> And enter in, Lord, enter into that void that, that we've, we've taken our egos and ourselves out of. Enter in and, and fill up the foundations of, of your love and of grace and of all things good. So that it, everything that we build on top of that is sturdy, solid. And pray that we can keep you in mind. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you both for, uh, one, sharing that song you wrote, but also for all the worship. And uh, let us continue, as you started then, uh, with some more prayers for us. So let us pray. Loving God, as we, as a community, look to our role in the city our role nationally. Breathe your power into all our activities that we do here. Encourage us in all that we do, empower us 
with the gifts of your Holy Spirit. And give us the wisdom in our decision making and the ability to have an understanding of all that you ask of each of us and the courage to follow that call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Creator God, as we look to journey with your mission here in the city, help us to be always aware of the needs of those around us here and around the world. Encourage us to reach out to all And for those leaders around the world, give them also the courage to strive for better equality, to strive for helping those on the edge of society, to bring an end to war and tyranny and enable greater unity around all our nations. And particularly at this time of so much inequality of treatment for the pandemic, that all will reach out so that all the world can be healed and that all of humanity can be served. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to thank you, Lord, for your hospitality and ask that you encourage each of us in our hospitality to all our neighbours and friends and to share all that we have. And to encourage each of us to when we gather to be bold in your name, to speak of our relationship with you, to bring others closer to you so that they will know your hope and certainty and that they will know you, the offer of eternal life to all people. But we know also, Lord, at this time that there are many who are unwell and each of us here will know or who those who have lost loved ones or have lost loved ones ourselves. And so we bring these to you now, Lord, in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we, we pray that we and all people of faith will be encouraged in all our work here and around the world that we will pull together as one body supporting all our brothers and sisters and using the gifts that your Holy Spirit has given us to spread the good news and to live a life, the life that you shared with us, Lord, a life that will model all the gifts and help reveal the kingdom in the here and now to those so many around us. And if we have the Lord's Prayer, let us bring these uh, prayers together now and if you want to come off mute so that our voices come together and if you want to say it in your first language please do but let us say together our father in heaven hallowed be your name your, name. your kingdom, kingdom come. come your will, your be, done will be done on earth, on earth as, in heaven. as in heaven give us today our today, daily, bread. daily bread forgive us, forgive our, us sins. our sins as we, As forgive we forgive those, those who sin, who against, sin us. against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, today is Trinity Sunday, and our reading is from uh, Romans 8, uh, chapter 12, um, which I will uh, read to you now. Romans 8, chapter 12. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. You did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today is uh, Trinity Sunday, um, and as one Bible commentator said, this is the one day of the year when we ponder a teaching of the church rather than a teaching of Jesus. Because nowhere, to quote, to continue the quotation, because nowhere in the New Testament will you find a declaration or a definition of the Trinity. Well, I don't agree with that sentiment. Um, and that may be because I spent 15 years in the Church of England, but prior to that I was in the Church of Wales, and I also heard the Trinity spoken then, so perhaps it's, uh, that will give you some confidence. But I don't agree with the sentiment or even the spirit of the quote, but it does raise, I think, a good question as to is the Trinity something to ponder and explore once a year, or does it articulate something more fundamental to the everyday life of each of us and the lives of others, and perhaps asks us, what relevance does the Trinity have to our lives today? It is so often said, and I wonder whether that's in the middle of the Church of England particularly, that this concept or the idea of the Trinity is just a little bit too difficult or confusing a three in one and one in three God, each person being God, whole and entire, distinct from one another, but the same God. What some do say, it's a little too difficult or confusing, but I often say it's worth listening to our children who can help us with these things so often. And a number of years ago, I remember my two older boys at the time, I think Evan Reese was six and Blethyn was five chatting interesting about the subject of the trinity which still i find bizarre just to repeat that <laughs> and this is a genuine story evan reese called over to blethyn and said hey bleth bleth did you know that jesus is god's son and jesus is also god it's true you know well i obviously thought that wasn't bad for a six-year-old and obviously disappointing that they hadn't taught of the holy spirit an hour later, after sitting on the naughty chair, I think he's not going to forget that there's a third person in it. But it is a challenge as to the relevance of the Trinity in our lives. And as a start, let me just quickly deal with uh, aspect as to whether the Trinity is scriptural or is it something that the church has made up? And my response is it is absolutely scriptural in that we have glimpses of the Trinitarian understanding of God throughout the Bible. In our reading today from Romans, we have Paul speaking of the spirit bearing witness to it, giving us courage to call our God our father, 
as well as talking about Jesus, heir with Christ. In 2 Corinthians, we have Paul's blessing, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew's gospel, we are commanded to go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in Acts, we have Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looking up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. But there is also the aspects that not only are the three persons of God, it tells that the three persons are the same God. We have the Father being God in Galatians. We have Jesus referred to God in John when Thomas called out, my Lord and my God. And we have the Holy Spirit also called God. I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father. And there are more. But I think it's important to know that it is grounded in scripture. But the question still remains, what is the relevance of Trinity to us today? And I wonder, if we look back over our life this week, this month, which member of the Trinity have we spent most time with in our thoughts? God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit? When and who do we pray most to? Who do we seek out strength from? Who do we shine out when we are in our communities? Do we share joys with Jesus, but our fears with God the Father? Our upbringing, our experiences, our relationships, good or bad with wives, brothers, sisters, friends, church life. Our Sunday school teaching shapes these relationships. They influence these relationships to a greater or lesser degree. Some of us might more easily relate to God the Father or God the creator, or Jesus, the one who lived among us, or the Holy Spirit. For some, the traditional language of God the Father is a stumbling block. You know, how can one who has never known a good father or a good man see the God as father as positive? And for many, we have to recognize that is painful. And therefore, that journey of, of a relationship with the twin, Trinity will take time. The inclusive language of creator, redeemer, reconciler, for some is part of that journey. And for some, an enormously helpful part of that journey. Our experiences, our relationships, equally can point us to our understanding of the Trinity but we can forget so easily that the doctrine of the Trinity was originally formulated to give words to our faith, to help us to articulate the mystery of faith with some common and consistent language that helps others to know about our faith and our relationships. An understanding that's about there being only one living and true God who gave his only son of one substance with the father. And this is the God that through his, rection, who, who through his resurrection is with each of us and every one of us always and offers himself through his Holy Spirit to be with each of us and every one of us always. I think that it's only when we start to scratch away at that relationship, start to scratch away at the mystery of the Trinity that the great joy that is offered to each of us, the great strength that can be offered to each of us can be found. And that is about a relationship that can be found today and tomorrow for all time. In my sermon over Easter, I mentioned which Jesus did we spend most time with? The Jesus who was with the disciples performing miracles, the Jesus in the tomb who seemed to have left the disciples down or the Jesus risen from the dead who surprised and shocked everybody and and went on to share the story of my mother battling with cancer and how she needed to spend time with each of those she needed the Jesus to perform miracles because she was afraid 
She needed the Jesus who was there alongside her suffering because she was in pain. And she needed to know the Jesus who would journey with her and be with her for all time. But, and this is the big but, is that it is wonderful that in our time of most need and my mum and I and each of us can seek out and find the part of the Trinity that we want. This is just a tiny part of what faith in a Trinitarian God is really all about. The danger is that it becomes about me. It becomes about I, what is it that I want? And so if we do that, we limit ourselves to a version of a God that seems to be the one who delivers most for each of us. And therefore, worse still, when things don't happen that we want, that we think are important, that we think I need, or when our prayers aren't answered in the way that I want, we then bounce along to another part of the Trinity as if we are shopping in Sainsbury's and they've run out of coffee. We decide to give Tesco's a call or Waitrose. We allow ourselves to define what we expect and don't expect from a relationship with God. We can define what we want and expect from a relationship with Jesus. We can define what we want and what we want from a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It comes about what we want. And when we do that, we limit it. We forget that his promise is of a greater life in the future, not necessarily today a greater life for whole of eternity. And not just for us, but for all people. We forget that he didn't promise in the here and now that there wouldn't be pain. And so for those with the greatest of faith who are suffering and struggling, that doesn't mean that the Trinitarian God isn't there every second of the day suffering with them, offering, offering an eternal life of joy, of greatness, of being more alive than ever before. A focus on what God can do for us or what he hasn't done for us means we risk forgetting what is our part in the covenant too. We can forget our responsibilities to love the Lord our God above all else. We forget our responsibilities to love our neighbours. We forget our responsibilities to care for the created world. We forget our responsibilities to speak up for unjust structures. We forget our responsibilities to go out and make disciples. It becomes about God. And we forget that he is with us, empowering us to be part of all of this. I asked at the start, what is the relevance to us of the Trinity today? The floor is the question. Our three in one, one in three God is everything. Who we are, who we will be today, tomorrow. Our role in community, our role in humanity, our role in this created earth. He gives us all that we need and offers to guide us, to be with us, to do all that's needed for a truly wonderful, joyous life for all. We have a gracious human, a gracious God who became fully human, who paid our debt for sin so that when we stumble and fall, we are forgiven always. He joins us in our sorrows and in our joys and intercedes for us at the Father's right hand. We have a truly amazing Holy Spirit who dwells within us and binds us together with each other so that we are community. We are never alone from him or from each other. All of this though wasn't just for us as individuals but for all people and when we ask what does the Trinity mean for me we forget that we are part of community. We are his people and he will be with us always. A gracious, almighty triune God. 
here on earth in our hearts and above who loves us, cares for us, enables us to go out in his name and gives us the strength to be and do all that he asks. What more can we ever ask of him? But perhaps we just need to ask ourselves a little. Are we really joining in with him in his mission here? Amen. I mean, God is, we hear your word and we read it afresh each day. Help each of us to know what you ask and to be encouraged by your word in all that we do. Amen. Tom and Pete, do you want to, when you have a, ready to lead us in some worship, be wonderful. Thank you. I can certainly um, relate to some of what a lot of what Nick said there in, in my life, um, where the suddenly the, the the focus turns to me, or <laughs> oops, <laughs> thanks for reminding me, Nick. Mm. Christ, I think upon your sacrifice, you became nothing, poured out to death, many times I've wondered at your gift of life, and I'm in that place once again, I'm in that place once again. And once again I look upon the cross where you die I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life Exalted to the highest place, King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at this saving grace, and I'm full of praise once again. Lord, I'm full of praise once again. Once again I look upon the cross where you die I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life Thank you for the cross Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross, oh, thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, my friend. And once again, I look upon the cross where you die. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you, 
Once again I pour out my life Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, just wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Pete, for joining as well as Tom. Wonderful to worship together. Really, just wonderful. Big thumbs up for Amanda. Thank you. Um, with just a couple of quick uh, notices, uh, just to mention, um, maybe a slide, just date for your diary, just to mention 10th of June. For those who don't know, it is the City Churches Open Day. So as part of the City Churches playing a role in encouraging everybody to come back in the city, uh, all of the City Churches, the ones in the Square Mile, are 
having a variety of uh, worships or things going on. There is particularly um, some walks and talks that are being done. Um, so for example, one of them is a choral walk that's being done by Andrew Eris. Um, that those who have been around Holy Sepulchre for many years will know that Andrew was, uh, was here. Uh, he's now director of music at St. Martin's in the field. And he's journeying around uh, a couple of the city churches with some choral scholars singing, singing some wonderful music and he'll end up uh, back at Holy Sepulchre at 6.30. But during the day, we will also have uh, in the morning at 11, some choral matins, uh, which for those who don't know that, it's a little bit like Evensong, um, but it's choral singing in the morning. So, it's, so it'll, it'll, it'll be fun uh, with, our, with, the, with our choir. At, at 1 p.m., we will have uh, contemporary worship and that'll be um, fairly relaxed. Um, Tom will be around and, and who knows, Tom might be bringing some friends with him. We hope so, but we'll see. But at the very least, we'll have wonderful Tom. And, um, and there may be some other things in the afternoon. Uh, and if you know people who uh, want to get involved, I think the idea of filling, filling the church full of music that day uh, and worship would be a wonderful. And I think people, we'll have people in the city wandering in and out throughout the day. So it will be wonderful to do that. Um, other services just next week, uh, Tuesday, we have our lunchtime informal praise and fellowship, which is all online. And Wednesday, uh, we have some Eucharist in the church. So the church is actually open on Wednesday from 10 uh, until three and uh, with a lunchtime uh, worship and Eucharist there, which is also live streamed as well. I don't know if there are any other notices. I'm not seeing any hands, hands going up to remind me that I've forgotten something, which is wonderful. Um, as always, at the end of the service, there is an opportunity for um, private prayer. If you message uh, Rachel um, under the name Holy Sepulchre, she can put you into uh, a private room for prayer with one of our prayer ministry team, if you would like. But if you are able to stay for a little while, we will go into groups and just have some chats and fellowship to catch up, which would also be wonderful. So let us finish with a final prayer. Heavenly God, we thank you for the joys of this worship this day. Equip us now that we can go out and be your servants around us. That this will be prepare us for the week ahead. And that this week will be filled with joys, filled with a growing relationship with you, Lord, knowing that your mission in this city and around the world is being delivered to all and that many will know you better. And so the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and with all those you love, always. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>